Do you ever feel like you have a lot of music theory knowledge, yet in an improvisation setting, you still somehow feel very limited? You might feel like your solos don't sound coherent or interesting, despite playing the right notes. I know this feeling all too well. Well, what if I told you an antidote to this problem is writing etudes. Just like when you're writing a story, you know if you just slap on some good verbs and nouns and adjectives, it doesn't really mean you made a good story. The same is true when writing etudes over a tune. If I were to just slap all the right notes in every measure, it could just end up sounding like this. If you get really good at writing interesting etudes, you'll be able to take those elements that you've learned from that process and put them into an improvisatory setting. As they say, composing is improvisation slowed down. Okay, so what makes a good etude and therefore also a good coherent improvised jazz solo? Let's find out by observing a multitude of great etudes today. Today, we'll do a deep dive into three great jazz etudes, and then we'll look at five of my favorite brand new etudes from you guys, the community. All right, the first etude we'll check out is over the jazz standard Stella by Starlight, and it comes from Chad LB's 20 Approach Note Etudes, a book he wrote with the goal of demonstrating how to incorporate chromaticism into solos in a melodic way. Let's take a listen from the bridge to the end and discuss what makes it sound good. <laughs> Awesome. For me, there are two main highlights that make this excerpt work so well and flow so naturally. For the first highlight, take note of when chromaticism is being played. Notice that it's not just being spammed all over the place, nor is it placed in a repeated, predictable manner. We have a chromatic walk-up starting on the end of B3 here. This entire measure doesn't have any chromaticism at all. Here's a descending passing tone on B2 to 3 here. The end of 4 here, B2 to 3 again, 1 to 2 this time, 4 to 1, etc. <laughs> In summary, constantly switching up the rhythmic placement of chromaticism can keep the chromaticism sounding fresh, something we should strive to be aware of within our own improvisation. The other highlight is how the lines flow up and down in a linear way. Rather than just jabbing at chord tones in random intervals, this etude uses almost entirely small intervals to travel up and down the registers of the horn which enables a nice showcasing of voice leading from chord to chord. The timing of when the lines go up and down is worth observing too. In measure 19, it goes down, then we go up here, then down a half measure, up the other half, sort of neutral this half, more upwards movement, then down this half, neutral here, then up, up some more, and a quick dip down to resolve the line. In summary, we can use melodic stair-step-like movements in various timings as a vehicle to create the feelings of highs and lows within our own solos. Amazing! Let's go ahead and take a look at another great etude. This one is over the tune Aerogen, and it comes from Cecil Alexander's 25 Hard Bop Etudes, a book that is chock full of modern soloing techniques and really colorful concepts. Let's take a listen to measures 13 through 27. <laughs> I 
I really like how that sounds. There's two highlights that we can observe here that make this etude sound awesome. The first one I noticed is that Cecil signifies the ending of a phrase by changing up the rhythm, mostly in these instances by using one or more quarter notes. We can see it here in measures 13 and 14. We have a constant stream of eighth notes, and in the next measure, we finally get a quarter note, and the preceding rest signify the end of the phrase. <laughs> The next phrase is more intense, utilizing eighth notes as the moving lines, but this time also triplets. Then in measure 21, this phrase finally resolves with an entire measure of quarter notes. This marks the beginning of the next phrase, which again eventually ends in quarter notes. summary, within our own improvised lines, we can signal the ending of a phrase more concretely by changing up the rhythm right before you rest a few beats. The other highlight I'd like to point out is the use of sudden larger interval leaps within eighth note lines. We can observe a lot of them starting in measure 19. We start on this flat third of a major chord, which is a little odd, but it's actually really a prolonged enclosure around the ninth on beat three, as you can see here. So it actually ends up sounding really cool. This beat two has a tritone leap downwards, then later another tritone leap. Here we have a minor six leap downwards, and then another one here immediately jumping up to the fifth. Cecil is a master of mixing small chromatic intervals with larger diatonic intervals. In summary, we can build suspense and intensity within our solos by incorporating spurts of large interval leaps within our eighth note lines, creating this more angular sound. Incredible. So the last JLV etude that I want to go over is from myself. When I joined the JLV channel here, Chad LB asked me to write my own book entitled 25 Melodic Etudes on Jazz Standards. I had written my own etudes before, but I had never sat down over multiple days and wrote 25 of them back to back. I saw this as a challenge that would teach me a lot of lessons, so I said yes. And indeed, it was quite the fruitful labor. I learned a ton from the process itself, and one of my favorite etudes that resulted from the project was the one that I wrote over the jazz standard, This I Dig of You. Let's take a listen to measures 9 through 28. <laughs> So two big things I learned from writing this etude. One of them is that we can intentionally plan a melodic structure that will always sound pleasant if we are first familiar with what the harmonic structure is calling for. For example, measure 13 and 14 is a 2-5, and the next two measures is another 2-5 down a half step. Usually what is done in this situation is to play a certain phrase on the first two five and then play the same or very similar phrase down a half step. This strategy is always effective, but I did want to see if there was a different way that we could navigate this harmonic pattern. And after some experimentation, I found one. First, with that stair-step concept in mind, I played a phrase that melodically travels downwards the first two five, and then without ending the phrase, I played new melodic material on the next two five, but this time ascending up the horn. So as you can see, the two five starts up and then walks down a half step, but my melodic line is the inverse. I first go down and then I go up. <laughs> So this ended up teaching me that an effective way to play chromatic two fives without just repeating the same material transposed, which again is very effective and it's not easy to do, is by incorporating the stair-step concept into our melodies. Another thing writing this etude taught me is that you can play an idea, repeat it, and then the third time you hint at it, but then swiftly segue into a new melody with some finesse. 
For example, in measure 17, I play this. Then I repeat it again. There was slight embellishment and modification to fit the chord, but it's still very much a repeat of the previous idea. So at this point, it's expected that I'm going to ascend up to the next scale step and descend. So I do, but suddenly transition out of the usual rhythm and play some new notes. All of a sudden, I'm in new territory. I built an expectation, then I surprised you. I did it again in the next phrase. There's one. There's the repeat. And then... I changed it up and started a new phrase. In measure 26, again, I'm playing a diminished pattern and it sounds like I'm about to do it again a third time. But instead, I use this sneak peek as a deception to segue into a new phrase. All in all, within our solos, we can set up an expectation through repetition and use one of the repeats as a bridge into a new idea to make the listener go, huh, yeah, I see what's coming, I see what's coming. Oh, fantastic. All these books that I just discussed can be found in the description below in the Jazz Lesson Videos website. Within any of those purchases, don't forget, you can use the code NG5 for $5 off. All right. So last month in our virtual jazz studio that Chad LB and I run called The Shed Club, I announced a friendly etude writing competition. The assignment was to write a jazz etude over a standard and then submit it so that everyone can view it and listen. Dozens of people submitted awesome etudes. And now I will share with you the selection of our top five favorite etudes from the community. And also, if you would like to join us at the Shed Club for just $10 a month, where we give a weekly video breakdown of a new exercise, instant access to view the past 25 video exercises, host and participate in more community jazz challenges, and access to a community of hundreds of other fellow Shedders, you are most certainly welcome to join us anytime. The link to register is in the description below. Alrighty, the first A2 that we'll look at from the Shed Club is from Stefan Greenberg. This is over the tune Sugar, and he demonstrates really well how to build a story using rhythmic repetition and rhythmic variation. Let's listen to measures one through 13. What I especially enjoy is that the note choices are generally pretty simple. This simplicity paves the way for the rhythm to be the center of focus. Great, thank you, Stefan Greenberg. So now let's take a look at an etude from a man with the username of Goose3676 over the standard Autumn Leaves. Pay close attention on how brilliantly Goose builds upon a motif and smoothly transitions them into new motifs. Here's measures 17 through 32. Love it. The clarity of all the various motifs really make this a clear set of fun melodies to listen to. Nice. Thank you, Goose3676. Now we're going to take a look at an etude from username Mike over the tune Confirmation. Notice the perfect voice leading as every measure starts on a chord tone. And also notice the great use of arpeggios to generate continuous lines. Here is the bridge to the end of the etude. <laughs>
Cool, I noticed a lot of borrowing from Charlie Parker's solo over this tune. Thank you, Mike. Now let's take a look at an etude from a man with the username of Soy Rick. Soy Wick was also a winner of one of the last Shed Club competitions that we did on this channel. The triad pair exercises you've never heard of before. This is over the great standard, there will never be another you. Pay close attention to how Soy Rick sets your ear up with interesting rhythmic syncopation. And then when a half note or longer arrives, it creates a surprisingly powerful contrast. Here's measure five through 16. Super cool. Those half notes to me created a sense of longing, but only because of the contrast it provided the notes before it. I also loved his use of the stair-stepping thirds for two whole measures and how they arrived to the sharp 11 half note. <sighs> Thank you, Soy Rick. Now the final etude of this video we'll check out is from a man with the username of Ross Tones. Ross Tones is very active in the Shed Club, frequently sharing his practicing clips with a gorgeous alto tone. He submitted a masterpiece of an etude over autumn leaves, utilizing three concepts from the Shed Club. Open triads from week 10, the Crimea River Lick from week 13, and a rapid arpeggio exercise based on diminished dominance from week 19. All of these lessons can still be found within the archives tab in the Shed Club. So let's listen to how Ross Tones brings together all three of these concepts in a coherent way. Here's measures 10 through 26. <laughs> Ooh, what an adventure that was. Thank you, Ross Tones, and thank you everyone for your submissions, and thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it fun to watch, and again, you can use code NG5 for $5 off any Jazz Lesson Videos PDF, and you can also join us anytime in the Shed Club, all these things being in the description below. As always, please leave a like and subscribe, as well as let us know in the comments what else you might like to see from us in the future. Again, thank you everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.